Hi, in this video, we will look at a few basic terms that we would be using throughout geometry. We'll just go and revise them. Let's see. Let's start with lines, line segments, and rays. Do you remember what line was? As per Euclid, we saw that a line is a one dimensional figure. And yes, it actually is a one dimensional figure. But a line is a collection of points in one single dimension along one direction. Let's see how. So if I have a lot of points in one particular direction only, and I have a figure which joins these points. Let's say this. Then this would be called a line. It's a one dimensional figure. And it can be extended in both directions onto our left as well as to our right. All right. Now, what is a line segment? A line segment is nothing but a small part of this particular line. It's a segment. So if I cut out a small segment from this line, that would be known as a line segment. Now the special thing about this line segment is that it has two fixed endpoints. Here, it cannot be extended on any side. It has two fixed endpoints. And finally, let's come to a ray. Now a ray is again a part of this particular line. But what I do is I just make one cut and take the rest of the line. I don't make two cuts. So from this I have a ray to have one end point and it can be extended in the other direction. So again it's a one dimensional figure that has one end point and can be extended in the other direction. Now let's look at how do I name these figures. Let's take this line for example. I would take any two points on this particular line and name them. For example, A and B. Then this line can be represented as line AB. And above this representation, I would make a symbol like this. That of a line which shows that this line is extendable in both directions. How do I name a line segment? Now, a line segment would have two endpoints, the one here and one here. For example, these points were P and Q. Then I would name this line segment as PQ. I would put a line above it or just say PQ. That would indicate that it's a line segment PQ. Finally, how do I name a ray? If the endpoint is called O, and a point here is known as R, then this ray can be named as O R and an arrow pointing towards R so that it's extendable on the side where the point R is. Now this was about lines, line segments and rays. How about looking at what collinear points are? If we look at this term collinear, that means something which is on a line. So what would collinear points be? They would be points which lie on the same line. Let's say I have a cluster of points. Let's call this point A. Let this be point B. Then there is point C right here. And there's another point, point D here. Now if you look at the first three points, points A, B and C, do you think you can draw a line passing through all the three points? I can draw a line through A and B. Yes, I can also draw a line through B and C. But the same line does not pass through A, does it? Also, if I have this line AC, it will not include this point B right here. While if you extend this line AC, we see that it also includes point D. So I can say that points A, C, and D are collinear, while A, B, C are not collinear. So that's what we mean by collinear points.
moving on let's look at what angles are so angles are formed by rays and we just saw what rays were so an angle is one ray for example this one let's call it o p and another ray which has the same end point so another ray which has o as the end point something like this let's call it oq now when two rays have the same end point then they form an angle this right here is an angle we could also say that when ray op initially like this was moved about this point o as fixed when i fix this point o and move the ray in certain direction something like a hand of a clock then the new ray for example this one op prime forms an angle or moves by an angle from point p so this is what we mean by an angle now there are different types of angles there could be an acute angle an obtuse angle or a right angle now an acute angle is actually a acute angle it's an angle which measures anywhere between 0 and 90 degrees so it's lesser than a right angle but it's greater than a 0 degree how about an obtuse angle now this angle measures anywhere between 90 degrees and 180 degrees now that's your obtuse angle the limits are not included so if i have an angle something like this then this particular value is definitely greater than a right angle yeah and it's less than a 180 degrees hence it's an obtuse angle how about a right angle we know that a right angle is always 90 degrees so that's about the measure of these three angles but what do we mean by a reflex angle we've seen that this particular angle which measures anywhere between 90 degree and 180 degrees is an obtuse angle let's call it say 120 degrees so this angle measures 120 degrees but if you look carefully there's another angle which is formed right on the outside of it aha this one this angle is also an angle right but it measures more than 180 degrees a 180 degrees would be a straight line so it measures more than 180 degrees but lesser than 360 let me tell you if this green angle is 120 then this blue angle would be 240 degrees because the sum of the angle through a full circle is 360 degrees so this 240 degree angle lies between a 180 degree and a 360 degree right if you look at this angle aob the reflex angle aob would be this one the angle right behind angle aob so this is reflex angle aob this also measures somewhere between 180 degrees and 360 degrees if you look at this right angle also there would be a reflex angle right here which measures 270 degrees and it exactly lies between 180 and 360 hence the angles on the opposite side are known as reflex angles and they lie between 180 degrees and 360 degrees once we are done with this let me tell you how do we name an angle if you look at this angle right here this one how do you name it first of all the point right here the end points of the two rays is known as the vertex 
the vertex of the angle while OQ and OP the rays are known as arms they are known as the arms of the angles while this point here is known as the vertex of the angle now whenever we have to name an angle we start with a point on one of its arms so let's say we start with point Q so we'll say Q then we'll come to the vertex O and finally to another point on the other arm so P so this is how I would name an angle so this angle is known as angle QOP or it could have been the other way around POQ angle POQ so these are the same names of this particular angle that's how you name an angle now that we know what an acute angle is what an obtuse angle is also what a right angle is and we also saw what is meant by a reflex angle now let's move on to complementary and supplementary angles so whenever I have two angles with a common arm for example let this vertex be point O P Q and R so these two angles angle P O Q and angle Q O R here and here are complementary angles because the sum of both these angles is 90 degrees so whenever the sum of any two angles is 90 degrees then those angles are known as complementary angles how about supplementary angles if the sum of any two angles is 180 degrees then they are known as supplementary angles so if 1 plus angle 2 angle 1 plus angle 2 is 180 degrees then they are known as supplementary angles now these angles that we saw here they have a common arm don't they and they also have a common vertex right so such angles are known as adjacent angles so whenever two angles have a common arm like this and have a common vertex then these two angles are known as adjacent angles same is the case here it has a common vertex and a common arm so these two angles are adjacent angles how about vertically opposite angles we've heard a lot about them haven't we so if there are two lines which intersect they basically form four angles right so this is angle 1 let me call this angle 2 also let me name this angle as angle 3 and this angle as angle 4 so we see that angle 2 is opposite to angle 1 hence angle 1 and 2 are a pair of vertically opposite angles similarly angle 3 is directly opposite to angle 4 and hence angle 3 and angle 4 are a pair of vertically opposite angles so that is what we mean by vertically opposite angles how about a linear pair of angles so whenever two adjacent angles two adjacent angles form a line that means the non common arms of the adjacent angles form a line so if this is a line and this is the common arm of those particular adjacent angles then let's call this A this is O this is B and let this be C so if OC is a common arm and this is angle BOC while this is angle AOC 
then these two angles angle AOC and angle BOC are known as a linear pair of angles because their non common arms OA and OB form a line right hence they are known as a linear pair of angles finally getting back to our lines so let's look at a pair of lines so a pair of lines would have two lines now these lines could be either like this or the other way could be something like this now what's the difference between the two in the first one if this is line L and this is line M then line L and M they meet each other at a particular point right here hence I call them intersecting lines while these lines let's call these L prime and M prime these two they never intersect even on extending to this side or this side you would see that the distance between them would remain constant always so this distance is same as this distance and they would never intersect such lines are our parallel lines and I said I'll be denoting them by two pipe signs parallel so that was the whole revision about what some basic concepts of geometry were we'll build on these in the coming few videos happy learning